In this video, I'm gonna take you dancing. Oh, hey there. Sorry, I'm just feeling so good about these videos that I started dancing. But now that I think about it, dancing is actually related to the next topic we're going to discuss, which is how eating bland food can help you fight hunger. Yes, you heard me right. Allow me to connect the dots between bland food, less hunger, and why I was dancing. You see, every time you take in a tasty food, you know, like grandma's homemade pie or that big ice cream sundae, you send your taste buds dancing and provide them with the tango of a lifetime. It just so happens that your taste buds love dancing, and when you consistently indulge in sugary, savory, and downright delicious food, they grow accustomed to it. It's as if you sign them up for daily dance lessons. The only problem with this dancing, however, is that your taste buds get quite crabby when you set the bar high and don't continuously follow through. So when you forget to drop them off at their dance lessons or have a typical diet meal, like chicken and broccoli, they get feisty. And they respond by letting your brain know that they haven't danced in what seems like forever. What ensues is a strong urge for anything and everything tasty that will provide them with an opportunity to dance again. By choosing not to sign your taste buds up for daily dance lessons, or choosing to eat bland foods, you significantly increase the likelihood that you will be able to stay strong on your diet due to fewer cravings and less hunger. Next. I'll forgo the analogy and break down the science to clarify any con In this video, I'll further break down the beat of the music from the previous one. If you were unable to keep up with the beat of the music in the last video, here's what I'm trying to say. When you eat your favorite foods, your brain is flushed with dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical released in the brain that is associated with feelings of reward and pleasure. It happens to be the same chemical that fuels the rush drug users feel immediately after using and has a major impact on addiction. This same rush, or high, experience when using illegal drugs has been shown to occur with food, as dopamine plays a large role in food reinforcing behaviors and food reward. Once that tasty food touches your tongue, you enter a brief state of euphoria in which your taste buds and brain are enticed. It is this experience that keeps you coming back for more. Hence the reason you may feel a loss of control once you dive into a bag of your favorite cookies, despite having the intention to eat just one or five. You get the point. And the desire to replicate this dopamine rush is so strong when your favorite foods are in sight that it's enough to override any satiety signals that are present. This is referred to as the dessert effect. It comes into play every time you eat one of your favorite foods, even if you've just eaten. You know, when you chow down on a burger and fries, yet still have room for a milkshake on the way out? Yeah, that's the dessert effect in full effect. So. What can you do to minimize the dancing and suppress the ensuing cravings and hunger? We'll talk about that next.
In this video, we'll discuss the benefit of eating raw vegetables when trying to fight hunger. Vegetables encompass all of the strategies that we've discussed so far. They're composed of at least 90% water, they're high in fiber, and when eaten raw, most taste very bland. When hunger hits and you've tried hydrating, you've focused on high fiber carbohydrates and stuck to bland foods, try grabbing a handful of raw vegetables. Not only will the high fiber and water content take up ample space in your stomach, which we know generates strong satiety signals, but the mere taste of the bitter vegetable is sure to turn off any further thought of food. Together, this trio may be the proverbial icing on the cake to rid any thought or feeling of hunger you may have had. When you feel overwhelmed by hunger, consider this approach rather than a cookie or a handful of something sweet. You and I both know that rarely ends well. Next, let's focus on how you've been eating and how it may impact hunger. In this video, we'll discuss how you eat and the impact it may have on your appetite. When trying to lose weight, you spend a lot of time stressing about what and when to eat. But rarely do you ever stop and think about how you eat. And now that I said that, I'm sure your mind has wandered to dwell on this. Chances are you don't recall how you ate your previous day's meal. And if you do, all you may remember is that you scarfed down a sandwich in under five minutes before that meeting you were running to make. But do you recall how it tasted or if you enjoyed it? The same can probably be said about the last time you had your favorite ice cream or grandma's infamous pancakes. What am I getting at? How you eat has a major impact on your appetite. If you're able to slow down and become more aware of your meal, you'll reap the benefits of mental and physical fullness for the hours to come. Taking the inhale it approach, as described above, may override the production of satiety hormones associated with eating. This means you could end up guzzling down hundreds of calories in a matter of minutes, but never feeling mentally or physically full. Then, an hour later, you could feel hungry again, despite having just eaten so many calories. Yes, it sounds crazy, but trust me, the speed at which you eat can have a radical impact on your appetite. Not buying it? Let me share some support for my audacious claim and demonstrate just how much eating speed influences your appetite and the total amount of calories you consume. In this video, we'll further discuss why slower is better. A study conducted at Texas Christian University sought to learn the impact eating speed had on appetite and calories consumed. Researchers split 70 subjects, some overweight and some normal weight, into two groups. Each group was instructed to eat at their pleasure from a large portion of pasta with peppers, onion, garlic, and olive oil. They were also provided with 12 ounces of water per meal. Each subject went through both a fast and slow eating protocol separated by a four day washed out period. During the fast phase, subjects were prompted to eat as if they were on a time constraint and instructed to take as big a bite as possible. During the slow phase, they were prompted to chew each bite thoroughly and to set their utensil down between bites. Researchers observed and prompted subjects appropriately throughout each phase. On average, the fast eaters consumed their meals in nine minutes. The slow eaters, on the other hand, took an average of 21 minutes. 
The fast eaters averaged 102 calories per minute. The slow eaters averaged 39 calories per minute. And in total, the fast eaters averaged 99 more calories per meal compared to the slow eaters. This may seem insignificant, but imagine if this occurs multiple times per day, day after day. It adds up. You may be thinking this doesn't apply to you because you prepare and portion your food ahead of time. Well, consider that the slow eaters reported significantly less hunger at multiple time points across the next few hours, and those in the fast group reported feeling hungry as soon as an hour later. So, even eating slowly from your portion food will help to curb your appetite for the hours to come. This enhanced sense of fullness occurs because it takes time for satiety signals to be sent to your brain. If you scarf down your food, you outwork these signals and never achieve that full feeling. Researchers also attributed this long-lasting fullness partly to their observation that those in the slow eating group drank more water during their meal versus those in the fast eating group. Hmm. If I recall, drinking water has some kind of benefit in regards to reducing appetite. Next, let's discuss a few foolproof strategies you can bring to the table, literally, to slow down your eating speed.